Good morning, good morning. Welcome to the Belonging Fellowship. We're so glad that you're here to celebrate with us on this Sunday. Come on and clap those hands, yeah. God is so good to us. And we can't afford not to praise His name. Come on, clap those hands. Yeah. There. Oh, I believe, oh, I believe, I believe, yeah, I believe, I'll have my mention there, yeah, I believe, oh, I believe just what he said, come on and clap those hands, I believe in Jesus, Do all things through Christ. Oh, I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I'll do all things through Christ. Yeah. Oh, I believe. Just what He said. Oh, He shall supply my needs. Yeah. I believe. I believe. Do you believe this morning? He shall supply on my knees, yeah. I oh, I believe just what he said. If you believe, clap those hands. We come to have some church this morning. Yeah! By faith. By faith, yeah. I can't have it. Gonna show it. I will show yeah. it. I believe, yeah. Don't get tired on me. Come on and clap those hands. He's been too good to us. Yes, he has. Guess what, church? I hear do. He'll do just what he said. If you just believe in him, he'll do it for you. He will do. He'll do just what he said. God will do. He'll do just what he Whatever said. you need. He'll do just what he said. All you gotta ask. He'll do just what he God said. shall supply He'll do just what he all said. your needs. He'll do just, what he said. just call on Jesus. Hey, yeah. He'll do. Yes, he will. God will. If you trust him, believe him, give God, give God a try. I promise you, he will, he will, yeah, yeah, yes, he will. He'll do just what he said. Call on the Jesus. Call on Jesus. All you gotta do, put it in the hands of the Lord. Put it in the hands of the master. Guess what, church? My God, he'll do it. He'll do it. He'll do it. He'll do it. Trust in him. Believe in him. Give him your whole heart. God will. God will. God will. God will. Yeah. God will do just what he said. He'll do. He'll do it. Yes, he'll do it. He'll do. He'll do it. Yes, he'll do it. He'll do it. Yes, he'll do it. God with you. I'll have my mansion one day. All I'm gonna do is keep serving him. God will answer your prayer. Just try the Lord. He'll do it. Just try the Lord. He'll supply all your needs. Give God a chance. Give Him your heart today. He'll do it for you. Just like He did it for me. I believe. I believe. I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe just what 
He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to go some more? Oh, I hear you. Yeah. Come on and clap those hands. Yeah. God is able. I believe. Just a word he said. Yeah, yeah. Come on and clap those hands. Give God praise. He's able. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We're going to worship the Lord this morning. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We make miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Oh, we make miracle work, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, oh, oh. we make a miracle word, promise keep, promise keep light in the darkness, that is who God, you are. Yes, you are light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. For you are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. Working in this place, hallelujah. I worship you, yeah, yeah. I worship you, God. You are a way to promise keep for oh, my God. That is who you are. You are a way maker. Yes, you are. Promise keeper. How many believe it? For oh, my God. That is who you are. For oh, searching. I worship you, Lord, you are here, mending every heart, I worship you, I worship you. Because he's a way maker. What else? 
whatever your problem is, whatever you're going through, God will be right there for you. All you gotta do is just call on the name of Jesus. That is who He is, Lord. That's who You are. strength yes you are your everlasting God no one can compare to you Jesus no one compares to you Lord you are our Savior you are our King Jesus you are the way maker you are the way maker you are the way maker Oh, yes, you are Jesus. Yes, you are Jesus. Oh, that is who you are. That is who you are. If you believe that God is your way maker, if you know that He's your Savior, He's the beginning, He's the end, He's Alpha and he's omega and guess what the same way he's a way maker for me he's a way maker for you so if you don't quite know who god is if you don't quite know who the savior is and what he's done for us i ask that you continue to look at this service and i want you to get the word whatever's brought forth into our people god we ask that you just bless them right now god let nothing that is said and nothing that is done be in vain god because we worship you god and we thank you if you believe that and if you know from your heart that God is your way maker, come on and clap those hands as we go into the next part of our service. God bless you and we love you. Thank you, Lord. Good morning and welcome to Belonging Fellowship. I'm Pastor Tanya and I'm so glad to see each and every one of you joining in. Go ahead and hit the like button and the share button and invite your family and friends as we go to the Lord and as we lift up God's name together. Let's start with a word of prayer. God, we thank you for this day and we thank you for this opportunity to come together, joining together virtually as we lift up your holy name. We pray, God, that 
that you move in every home, move in every heart, and allow us to feel your presence, and allow us to come together and worship in spirit and in truth. Holy Spirit, have thine own way, and we'll forever give your name the honor, the glory, and the praise. It is in Jesus the Christ's name. We all say amen. I just have a few things for Pastor's Briefs this morning. I want to continue to encourage you to join us for our Wednesday night Bible study moment. It is not your typical Bible study. It is around 30 minutes and it is a, a short message of hope and inspiration based on the scripture. So meet us on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. I wanna thank each and every one of you for all that you are doing with Belonging Fellowship. And I do apologize that we haven't been able to do any face-to-face -face events, but we wanna keep you safe. So as the COVID numbers are still on the rise, I wanna encourage you to follow those three W's. The first one is to wear your mask. And I know you might be the only one in the store with the mask on, but wear your mask. The second one is to uh, wait six feet apart, keep your distance from people and remind them that you need your distance. And the last one is something you should always be doing. And that's washing those hands. So follow those three W's and we can hopefully get back together sometime soon. Now, there's many ways you can still stay connected with us. And there's ways we still want to make sure we're connecting with you. If you are in need of communion elements and you want to have that little cup of juice and feel connected with us, we have belongers who will be delivering in Roxboro next Saturday. Please check out our Facebook page and our website to find out information, but it'll be on Saturday the 5th from 1 to 2 in the Roses parking lot, and they will meet you there so you can pick up your communion. We want to stay connected to you. And then join us on that Sunday, next Sunday, the first Sunday of February, as we celebrate Holy Communion. I also want you to know that if you can't meet us in Roxborough or you can't meet our belonging team there, we can deliver or mail your communion to you. We just want you to feel connected with us. And if you ever need anything, if you need a word of prayer, words of encouragement, words of hope, or if you stand in the need of things that you may not have, call us at 866-3-BELONG. We truly do want to do the work that God has called us to do. I thank each and every one for joining us today. And now it's giving time. Here at Belonging Fellowship, there are multiple ways to give. The first way to give is through Givelify. You can download the app so that you can quickly give on Givelify. We have recently added Tithely to our uh, ways of giving. Go to Tithely on your smartphone and find that app Tithely. Look for Belonging Fellowship and you will not only be able to give through Tithely, but you will be able to find, new, uh, find our new uh, app and be able to stay connected with us. So please look on Tithely on your smartphone, download Tithely, look for Belonging Fellowship and you'll see our brand new app. You can post prayers, you can stay connected with us and we wanna stay connected with you. So those are the main ways that we are asking that you give through Tithely or Givelify. And we pray that no matter which platform you use, that you allow the Lord to speak and allow the Lord to lead you. Because what we do here at Belonging Fellowship is really take care of our community. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we thank you for this moment. We thank you, God, for every belonger that is connected with us. And God, as we are preparing for giving time, search our hearts, lead us and guide us. And God, let us realize that if we have been blessed, then we can be a blessing to someone else. And Lord, as people are sowing seeds into belonging, Lord, lead our leadership council to make the right decisions for our community and let us make impact across this world. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name, we all say, amen. It's giving time. This week's sermon, as we are uh, pulling together the end of January, as we are closing out I Am Enough series, I want to preach on the title, From Pain to Praise. And this will be coming from Genesis 
chapter 29, verses 31 through 35. And it reads, When the Lord saw that Leah was not loved, he enabled her to conceive, but Rachel remained childless. Leah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Reuben, for she said, It is because the Lord has seen my misery. Surely my husband will love me now. She conceived again, and when she gave birth to a son, she said, Because the Lord heard that I am not loved, he gave me this one too. So she named him Simeon. Again, she conceived, and when she gave birth to a son, she said, now at last, my husband will become attached to me because I have borne him three sons. So he was named Levi. She conceived again, and when she gave birth to a son, she said, this time, I will praise the Lord. So she named him Judah. Then she stopped having children. Church, this is the word of God for the people of God. And we all say, thanks be to God. Let's pray. God, we thank you for this preaching moment. We thank you for this moment that we come together and listen and receive from you. And Lord, we thank you for allowing us this moment to be blessed by you. Now I pray, God, that you shallow me, O Lord, shallow me until there's more of thee and less of me. Shallow me, O Lord, shallow me until there's more of thee and less of me. Shallow me, O Lord, shallow me until there's all of thee and none of me. And I'll give your name the honor, the glory, and the praise. It is in Jesus the Christ's name that we all say amen. From pain to praise. This month, I feel a bit like a broken record, playing the same scratchy message over and over. Yet, I will not apologize because as a previous school teacher, I know that high repetition allows new lessons and new concepts to move from your short-term working memory to your long-term memory. And I want you to move the journey of self-love to a permanent lesson ingrained in you. So hear me clearly. You cannot love your neighbor fully if you do not love yourself. Therefore, it is essential to love yourself and love every nook and cranny, every scrape and scar. You must know who you are and how you need to be loved and you need to love who you are so that you can give real love and hopefully receive real love. See, this means you must be healthy and whole to fully love others. It requires you to do real work of healing, dealing, and moving through your baggage, your trauma, and your pain. We must realize that self-love starts within. See, this is an intentional effort and decision to love oneself as they are not in comparison to anyone else. Rest assured, when you know who you are, when you begin to really love yourself and nurture yourself and take time to do the work on yourself, you will do all you can to receive the best that you can. You will stop settling for less. When you are full, you have no reason to thirst for anything else. <laughs> Let's be honest, we live in a, how shall I say it, uh, a society where people are in search for love and for someone to complete them. We are in a thirsty culture where people are looking to be quenched by external sources instead of being filled and satisfied internally. I was very clear with my husband. I want you in my life. I enjoy your company, but I am complete without you. You are just the icing on my cake. 
He may have been offended, but I think he really understood that I had done a lot of work and, uh, and, and been truthful to myself to heal from past trauma. I had done too much work on myself to heal for some from some of the trauma of my past for any man, not just him, for any man to come in and think I needed them to complete me. See, as a young girl, we are fed the lies that we need someone to choose to marry us in order for us to be whole. No, this is not a male bashing sermon, I promise, I promise. I want to deal with the ladies just for a second. See, it is ingrained in us by society that we should uh, be married with kids, a house with a white picket fence and have a successful career and still come home, keep the house clean, uh, have a, uh, a meal on at the table each and every night and still look good trying to do it. All of that means all the pressure that the society puts on us to do those things. All of that is supposed to say, if we complete all of that, that we are worthy of love and adored by many. See, women are taught to be enough is to give all of our attention, all of our time, all of our talents, all of our stuff, all of us to everyone else. But may I set you free from the patriarchal bondage that has you bound. You are already enough just as you are. You can be whole with just me, myself, and I. You do not need another human to complete you. That is the work of God, the work of Jesus, and the work of the Holy Spirit. It is when we make peace with ourselves and trust God to heal and feel us that we are able to be in real relationship or shall I say, to be in a healthy relationship. When we show up in relationships broken, empty, in search of someone to fill a void, all we are asking for is heartbreak, disappointment, and rejection. Therefore, we need to be whole first and love ourselves fully. We need self-love before we need to seek love. Self-love is defined by the Brain and Behavior Research Foundation as a state of appreciation for oneself that grows from actions that support our physical, psychological, and spiritual growth. Self-love means having a high regard for your own well-being and happiness. Self-love means that you are taking care of your own needs and not sacrificing your well-being to please others. Lord, we got some work to do. Self-love means not settling for less than you deserve. Self-love may seem like a new concept and it may feel new as I've been teaching it all month long. And it may even feel like it's new for some of us, especially as black and brown women. Because again, we were taught to love and to take care of everyone but ourselves. And this is no new concept. Even in biblical times, we see a woman uh, who struggled with loving herself. As we look at the text for today in Genesis chapter 29, verses 31 through 35, we find a story of a woman who allows her situation and lack of outward love to define her. Leah was the oldest daughter of Laban and scripture only describes her, her as tender eyed. Some would say that translates as ugly or unattractive but it describes her baby sister, Rachel, as beautiful and well-favored. Now, Leah, being the oldest, should have customarily been chosen to get married first and have a husband. But in comes Jacob, and you have to go back and read the whole narrative to understand the whole story. But Jacob comes in and upsets tradition. Jacob, who was on the run, finds himself at a well and sees a beautiful woman. Jacob sees this beautiful woman and immediately is smitten because of her beauty. So he asks her father for permission to marry her. 
Although custom is challenged, Laban, her father, gave Rachel's hand in marriage in exchange for seven years of servitude. Okay, let me be real clear. I'm going to fast forward the story. Jacob works for those seven years. Laban then is tricked, uh, has decided to trick him by using Leah. Laban instructs Leah to go to Jacob and consummate the marriage. And Laban and Leah were both wrong. I know they were both wrong, but Leah is only participating because she is in a patriarchal society and must live and do what her father tells her to do. She's being the obedient daughter and did what daddy sent her to do. The next morning, Jacob wakes up. He's upset like anybody would be upset because he has been tricked. And so Laban tries to sugarcoat all of this and says, well, you can marry Rachel after uh, some more work and you must commit to doing even more years of work for me. And y'all, Jacob agrees. And so about a week later, he marries Rachel, the love of his life. And so within a week, Rachel and Leah are married to the same man. Two sisters married to the same man. Get this. By outward appearance, Leah is now successful because she is married. But the reality is the only reason she is married is because of deception. Her sister was the one Jacob desired and Leah was forced upon him. Rachel, on the other hand, she is loved and adored by her husband. But Leah is rejected and neglected. Rachel is treated with affection and admiration while Leah is unloved and ignored. Leah had to live with the fact that Jacob and Rachel had a special love for one another. She could see it each and every day. She had to confront her misery every single day. She lived watching her sister get all the love and admiration that she so yearned to have. Leah had a miserable life. She was in a permanent situation that was totally beyond her control. She couldn't help how she looked and, and how she showed up in the world. She couldn't help that her father forced her into this deceptive plan. And she couldn't help any of this. Can you imagine daily watching your sister get the love you want from the man you want it from? Daily seeing yourself as the ugly one, seeing yourself as the undesirable one, being in relationship with someone who does not love you the way you want to be loved, seeing your sister be loved and admired while you are neglected. Yet some of us can imagine it because some of us have lived through relationships that were more damaging than loving. Some are still in loveless relationships, desiring real love, but too afraid to let go out of fear of a failed relationship. The reality is there are many Leahs watching this morning, and I'm not talking about just the women. People in broken relationships and broken places looking for love and validation from this world. People who have believed the description of others and embraced it as their own identity. The ugly one, the fat one, the unwanted one. And because of that internal negativity, you can't help but experience external conflict. But back to Genesis and Leah, Leah's miserable. She's experiencing this uh, negativity inside, this internal negative self-talk. And she can't help but experience this external conflict that she still isn't getting the love she wants. But God is an all-knowing God. And the scripture says that God saw Leah and because Leah was unloved and she was hurting so much, God showed her favor. God saw her pain and opened up her womb. 
Now, this is not just God bringing her comfort through children. This is God elevating her status in society. See, women were valued by their ability to bear children. God gave her the ability to bring forth life. Now, let's remember it takes two to make a baby, and we're going to keep this G-rated. Although she is not receiving the love from her husband, she is still performing her wifely duties. A loveless marriage, yet he still has access to her body. She gets pregnant, and scripture says that she had her first son and looked at him and named him Reuben. Leah intentionally named him Reuben because she believed that the reason he was born is because the Lord saw her affliction and gave her favor. So his name literally means, look, a son. Get this. Leah looks at her son and says, and now because of this baby, my husband is surely going to love me now. Leah has relegated her value and worth to the world's standards. She is now hoping that what she produces will bring her love. How many of us have placed our value on how much money we can produce? Or maybe it is how many kids you can produce or if you have the ability to even produce a child. Maybe your value is tied up in whether or not you finish writing a book, grow a business, or have more external stuff. Many of us have a Leah mindset and believe if we produce something, just maybe people will love us and accept us. And Leah continues on her life and has her second child. She has a second son and names him Simeon because she is hated and God gave her comfort. Now, baby number three comes along. She's had one, she's had two, and now baby three comes and she names him Levi because this time she believes he'll be joined unto me because Levi means to connect. Get this, belongers. God has shown favor to Leah by opening her womb. He blesses her not only one time, but three times, yet she is still seeking approval and seeking after Jacob's love. Leah doesn't focus on the blessing that God is allowing to come to her and from her. She is too busy still looking at the hurt and the pain. She is still trying to produce enough of the right thing to be deemed valuable and worthy of love. She is being blessed and still focuses on what she does not have. The sad thing is that is the reality for many people. God blesses people with a brand new job, yet they're complaining about their boss. God has blessed them with good health and a happy family and a new house, yet they are complaining about the power bill is too high or they don't have enough of this or enough of that. We all know that we reach times when we only focus on what we do not have. You know we're all guilty of not being satisfied, not being complete, not thanking God for what God has already done for us. Leah is in the same place many of us are in right now. We are in messed up situations. However, yet God is still showing favor. See, even sometimes we're in situations where our enemy is fiercely attacking and God is still showing favor. We may even be facing sickness or disease in our bodies, yet God has us in the land of the living and leaving doctors trying to figure out how are we still alive? See, the world is challenging us with corrupt politicians, yet the God we serve is still protecting us from all of their plots and schemes. I want us to hear that we can be in unfavorable situations and still have the favor of God on our lives. We can be favored and still have trouble. 
Leah has now been pregnant three times. She has had three healthy pregnancies. She has had three uncomplicated deliveries, three beautiful baby boys, yet she is still caught up in pleasing man and focusing on what she does not have. Leah has now given birth to three boys. Y'all, this is a precious commodity of her time period. And now she is pregnant yet again. In my own imagination, I feel like something should have shaken Leah up and something should have changed in her baby after baby. And maybe in this fourth pregnancy, she decided as she watched three little boys running around, trying to take care of them by herself, trying to do everything to make him love her. Her, maybe just for a maybe moment that she finally said to herself, now, wait a minute. I have given this man three beautiful boys. I have given him gifts that my good looking sister can't give him. And he still does not love me. This time, maybe Leah said, this is going to be different. This child is coming for a purpose. This child has a reason. I can see her and imagine her with her head down, praying and believing that something has to change for us, for her. She says, this time has to be different. What Leah doesn't realize is that she is carrying her own deliverance. Get this, what God had placed inside her is precious. Leah didn't comprehend the breakthrough she was about to push forward. When the fourth child is born, something happens to Leah. She looks down and sees that it is another baby boy. And she says, now will I praise the Lord. And she names him Judah, which means praise. Y'all, this is the only child whose name is not directly connected to her rejection. This time she names him from a place of joy and celebration. Now, if I could imagine with my holy imagination that Leah finally said to herself what I've been trying to get you to say to yourself, enough is enough. The pity parties have got to stop. The excuses have got to stop. I must be released from any demonic trap on my mind that says I am not enough. So now and right now, I will praise the Lord. It took her three pregnancies, three heart pushing deliveries to get Leah to to understand that God was birthing something new in her life. When we stop seeking earthly pleasures and focus on seeking God, God will provide us everything we need. See, we need to really take a look at Leah. Leah did what most of us struggle with. Leah finally understood her situation. So, I want to remind us that we must first understand our situation. Leah knew she could not just get up and walk out on him. She couldn't file for divorce. She couldn't go back home to her daddy. So she kept doing what God had gifted her to do. She kept having babies because that was the gift that God gave her. Some of us can't leave the situations we are in. You have to stay on that job until God opens up another door. You have to raise your troubled child. You can't just run and leave. You just have to stay right where you are. Yet there are times when you cannot leave. You cannot run away and from that situation. And you can still produce in the situation. Keep, keep this in mind now. Leah's situation didn't change. But her producing and her production kept increasing. She couldn't change that he didn't love her. Leah stayed and kept having babies because that is what her gift was for that season. Sometimes we, we want to run. Sometimes we want to run and hide, but we must seek God and ask God to look into our situations. We must pray that God sees us and favors us. But even if you don't see God's hand moving in your situation, you must remember that God still has you in God's hands. The next thing I, I want to quickly say is that change can come from within. Keep in mind, Leah's situation didn't change. 
but something changed in Leah. Again, she's a woman in a patriarchal society. She has no power. She has no privilege. She has no say. Her living standards cannot change. And even the man she was married to cannot change. Yet something changes after she has baby number four. It is as though Leah finally says, God, I don't know why you're doing this in my life. God, I don't know what you are doing, but I'm going to choose to praise you anyway. Leah began, began to take her focus off of the emotional hurt and anguish she was in and put her focus on the Lord. She decided to praise God. Belongers, many of us need to put our focus back on the God that loves us. We need to put our focus back on God and off the mess that is trying to distract us. She changed her focus. She cleared her vision. She realigned her life and put God back in control. So what do we need to do? Just maybe we need to shift our focus and make a change from within. She switched her focus from her difficulties to her God. And she praised God for being God. She stopped focusing on the rejection and looked to God. Sometimes we have to be willing to endure the trial to get to the testimony that God is still in the blessing business. Leah decided after all of that to praise. Judah's name is praise. Let me be clear for you. Sometimes when you are facing hard times or you are in hard situations, God can give you favor. And when God gives you favor, it should be an automatic response to give God praise. And Leah decided to praise. Leah had to decide that she was not going to let what happened to her define her. And I believe in each pregnancy, pregnancy, she had a change within her. Belongers, you must ask yourself if what God is trying to do in you and through you is more important than the pain you are experiencing. You know the feeling. Past hurt and Past rejection lingers so long, all you can think about is the hurt. All you can think about is how people are not receiving you. Maybe you're not being loved the way you want to be loved. All of that can take your focus. But you have to reach a point and have a Leah change and decide this time, I'm going to let it go. The pressure of the pain forced her to deal with it. And it was her wake-up call to do something different. See, she realized she had to seek her own true relationship with God. She realized that she had to shift in to praise. See, you may realize change must be made, but sometimes we're too afraid to make the change. I want you to know that God can heal your pain and give you a praise. God can deliver you right in the situation that you're in. God can favor you and not even change your zip code. God can be there with you. And you'll be able to look back and see that it was nobody but God that kept you. And just maybe you'll have a Leah moment to begin to praise. I know, I know. You may be dealing with issues right now. You may be in a tough situation right now. You must make a choice. Will I let the situation define me or will I focus on whatever God is doing in and through me? While Leah focused on Jacob, she was ignoring the blessings that God was giving her and only her. While she was seeking his love, God gave her love. While she was obsessed with getting Jacob's attention, God was giving her blessings out of heartache 
She birthed greatness out of rejection. She birthed a legacy out of low self-worth. She birthed a priesthood out of neglect. She birthed the ancestors of Jesus. Y'all get this. The ugly sister brought forth the descendants of the Savior. Leah shifted her focus from her pain and began to praise. What would happen if you decided to shift your focus and work on you? What would happen if you decided that other people withholding their love from you will not stop you from loving you. The thing is, she went through all of this emotional pain, frustration, all of this seeking love from the wrong place. She wanted a man to fill her and complete her, and he didn't even want her. Yet in the midst of all of that, in the midst of her pain, God saw her and blessed her, and God blessed her in ways that changed her status and her life. She brought forth boys that would change her worldly status and gave her a reason to praise. Belongers, I just want you to shift your focus. Stop looking at what you don't have, who doesn't want you, who doesn't love you, who doesn't see you. I want you to focus on you and realize that God sees you and God is still blessing you. And you have all that you need already within you. And when you choose to remember, God can shift you from pain to praise. All you have to do is put your focus on God. See, the thing is, Leah continued to seek after what her sister had. And the reality is, the love that Jacob had for Rachel was for Rachel. And for whatever reason, Laban decided to put Leah in this situation the only blessing that came from it was Leah realized that even in the midst of my sorrow, even in the midst of pain and rejection, God can still show me favor. Even when I didn't cause the situation, I had no choice in the situation. God can give me favor. God can shift my pain into praise. Belongers, I'm not sure where you are in life. I'm not sure if you're experiencing situations where you feel like you're stuck and you feel like you're unloved and you feel like you can't get beyond the situation that you're in. I just want to remind you that if you shift your focus from the pain, from the situation, from the circumstances and find the glimmer of hope in the midst of it all, I believe with you that God can bring you through and shift you from pain to praise. And that's my prayer for each one of you to move from pain to praise. And it starts when you start loving yourself. Amen. We are definitely grateful that you joined us today to worship with us and to enjoy a good time in the Lord via technology. And we ask that you would continue to pray, pray for us and that you would continue to lift up Belonging Fellowship as we seek this new journey and still carry out ministry in a different way. We give this simple benediction based off the sermon you've heard from pain to praise. May the God who is able to take those moments of pain and turn it into priceless moments of praise that draws your attention back, that those moments were nothing more but for God's glory to help be shown through the testimony of your life. May that be with you throughout this week and throughout the rest of your journey. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. And if no one has told you today, let us be the first to say, we love you and so does the Lord. God bless you and we'll see you next week.